love that sometimes. You got this guy at the end there, uh, Brent, and he's like, you're not going to make it. And you're like, you're not helping. <laughs> and you know, sometimes you feel like that's how it is in life, right? You feel like, am I going to make it? And you got all these people who are like, oh, you're not going to make it. You're never going to make it. You're never going to make a difference. Your life isn't going to count. But that's not what you're going to hear here this weekend. This weekend is all about helping you understand that you have a mission. And that this mission is possible. That this mission, God, in fact, is giving to you. This is not a mission just for anybody. This is a mission that's for you. That each one of us, if we can leave this weekend understanding that God has a tailor-made mission for you. That this mission is possible. It's like, you know, you can put your face right there where that question mark is. I don't love Mission Impossible. In fact, several years ago when the first, uh, I guess they, they started the series with Tom Cruise and, and the music uh, that came out with it, it was just, you know, that techno kind of sound. And I bought the soundtrack and I remember there was a time when, when I would just, every morning I would wake up and I would put that CD in. And it's like, and I was like, oh, you know, I was like ready to go. I'm like, get in my car, you know, let's go find a mission. And I want you to understand that that's the kind of excitement and zeal and fervor that God wants you to have about your everyday life. That you can live out God's mission and intention for your life right here, right now, every day of your life. But you see, you've got to, you've got to follow the Holy Ghost. You've got to follow the Holy Spirit. And that's why, you know, I, I was like, great, you know, this is like ghost protocol. And so I was like, oh, man, you know, we can talk about Holy Ghost protocol. And, you know, so some of you are like, what does that mean? Yeah, exactly. This is what it means. It means that when you are a follower of Jesus, the Bible tells us that the Holy Ghost resides inside of us, that God gives us his spirit. And because God's spirit lives within us, it's kind of like a GPS. You guys know what a GPS is, right? Yeah, your navigation system you got on your phones or you know in your cars or whatever. And, and the thing about it is this: is that the GPS it, it basically helps you find your way. It helps you find your direction and and tells you kind of you know where you should be going. And if you get off the path, it kind of helps redirect you. You know, it's like I get lost a lot, and and because I'm a man, you know, I don't like to ask for directions. And so, you know, I can be driving for hours, even with the GPS. You know? It's like, because sometimes it's hard for me to understand, you know, what that little thing, it's like, which, which line am I supposed to follow, you know? And so I can be lost, and it's like, redirecting, recalculating. And it's like, I hear that all the time. But that's what the Holy Ghost does in our lives, recalculating. When you get off track, the Holy Spirit lives inside of us to say, okay, let's recalculate. Let's, let's get back on track with God. This weekend is a time for you, some of you. Maybe last year you made some commitments and some decisions, and, and from, from when you were raising your hands, you were all like, yeah, you know, I was here last year. Well, let me ask you, did you, how'd you do this last year? You see, what happens is we come to these events and we make commitments and we kind of, we, we get all pumped up and we say, okay, you know, yeah, I really want to do this for God. And then about six weeks later, we kind of forget. And here's what happens, is that, we lack the discipline. We lack the motivation. And then God will, through His Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts. Something happens at church or something happens with your family or somebody you know, encourages you and you say, oh yeah, okay, I've got to get back on track. Recalculating, you get back on track. And this weekend is a time for some of you to recalculate again and say, okay, you know, how did I do last year? What do I need to change from last year to this year? So that I don't get off track as much or so that I can fulfill God's mission for my life. Because if there is a God, then I have to believe that he has a purpose and a reason for me to live. Let me check. Uh, my, uh, i got to find my notes. Sorry. Wow, y'all hear that? It's like really cool. I wish I could do that. Well, here's the thing. Why missions? This is it. Simple nutshell. This is why missions are, are important and, and why every mission we have to believe is possible. It's because every single person has a soul. Every single person has a soul. Your friends have a soul. Your moms and dads have souls. Even the people you don't like have souls. 
The people around the world that you don't know, they have souls. In fact, there's almost, we're, we're coming to the point where we're, we're reaching 7 billion people on the planet. 7 billion people. And, and let me tell you this. The majority of those people, in fact, two-thirds of the world doesn't even know Jesus. They don't know God. They don't know who we're talking about here this weekend. They don't have a clue who Jesus is. And so because of that, it's important for us to understand that everyone has a soul. And because everyone has a soul, because everyone is important to God, we have to understand that God wants to use us to tell them about Him. That's why we exist. We exist to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ. And so, I don't know if you knew this, but God has a mission statement. You know, in the business world and even in churches and stuff like that, they have mission statements. You guys know what a mission statement is, right? It's kind of like your reason for existing, your reason for living. Let me give you what God's mission statement is. It's right here. In fact, in Revelation 7, 9, if you've got a Bible, you can turn it to, to there. And, um, and I want to point out a couple of things to you so you can even mark in your Bible if you've got a pen or, or whatever. I think it's really good sometimes to make notes and markings so that you can come back and remember it. But look at what this verse says. It says, After these things I looked, and behold, there was a great multitude which no one could count from every nation. Not just America, from every nation. From the people who are in Swaziland to the Congo to the people who are in Asia and Korea and you know Japan, all that area, to the people who are in Latin America, everywhere, from every nation, and all tribes and peoples and tongues. That means every person from every tribe had a representation standing for the King of Kings. This is God's mission statement, that there would be every nation represented, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hands, and they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. You see, there are some key words here that I want you to, to underline or to mark, and it's this, it's every nation, all tribes, Every and all. And those are huge words. When we're talking about 7 billion people in the world. And God is saying this, I want every person to know who I am. God is saying, I want all people to know who I am. And you know what? You're included in that all as well. Let me, let me give you a little phrase that you can write down. I don't think I said this last year, but, but if I did, it's still good to hear. It's all means all, and that's all that all means. Okay. All means all, and that's all that all means. All means everybody, every single person. God wants everybody to know Him. And you're part of that. And God wants to use you to help everyone else know Him. You can do that. That's the mission that God has given us. Look at this. God also has a vision statement. A vision statement is kind of like, how is this going to happen? Okay? And it says, and Jesus came up and spoke to them saying, here's that word again, all, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. So it's like God, Jesus is saying this. Jesus is saying, I'm not just king of heaven. He's saying, I'm king of earth too. He's saying that I have power over everything that you know, everything that you don't know. But let me ask you this. Have you submitted to God's authority in your life? I hang out with a lot of skaters. I'm not a skater. But uh, I hang out with a lot of skaters, and we, we sort of have skate ministry. It's kind of on hiatus right now because some of the skaters that, that we're training are doing other things and, and whatever. But, but, you know, in the skate ministry, in the skate world, those guys can kind of be a little hard-hearted, you know, and, and they're really kind of sort of not nice sometimes. Let me just put it that way. They're not very nice sometimes. And, and it's like they can have this attitude, and, and it's kind of like they don't like authority. In fact, you don't even have to be a skater to not like authority. Some of you in this room may not like authority. You know, your parents could be like, uh, hey, Junior, um, clean your room. Why don't you clean your own room, right? No, go and clean your room. Why don't you clean your room first? Then I'll clean my room. You're going to tell me what? Right? And you're like, Junior, go clean your room. And you're like, right, I'll clean my room. And you, what do you do? You kind of stomp off and I'll clean my room, all right? I'll clean my room. Right? You keep the dog. Right? And you're like, what did the dog do? The dog didn't do anything. The dog's like, what's going on? Yeah. 
it's rough around here. So, you know. So, you know. And so it's like you go up to your room and what do you do? You, do? you just kind of kick stuff around. You're like throwing in the door. You're slamming doors all over the place. And you're like, oh, I clean the room. And then you, you walk out and your mom's like, hey, you know, did you clean your room? Yeah. Clean my room. She comes up, you know, and she's like, this ain't clean. It's like, I'm not cleaning my room, you know? And it's like we have this problem with authority. We don't like to be told what to do. But I'm going to tell you this. And I don't know where this is on my slides, but it doesn't matter. Is you're always going to have somebody who's going to tell you what to do. Always. You're going to have a boss. They're going to tell you what to do. You're going to have a teacher. They're going to tell you what to do. God is going to tell you what to do. And so if you've got a problem with authority, you better get over that problem with authority because God is the ultimate authority in our lives. And so let me just 